Here we've been drying this under plastic so it won't warp. We want it to dry very, very slowly and we're here in the desert so we really have to cover it up. So let's see what it looks like. Good plastic. This dry cleaning plastic works really well. So here's our sink, kind of the way we looked at it last time. See if it's still level. Pretty good. Now this is leather hard right now. That means that if I hit it, I'm not going to make a mark in it or anything like that. I actually have to cut it. I got to make sure that I got one undulation, this curve. If any of you have ever thrown a bowl, you know that a lot of times there's a little kind of bump right in here. You certainly don't want that in the sink. And let's kind of refine this bottom here a little bit. I'm just going to press down and smooth it. And before, we're going to trim this and slip this today. We're going to slip it with a, with a fine porcelain slip. And we're going to trim off all the excess clay. We're going to take it. We're going to slip it. We're going to let it dry just a little bit. We're going to flip it over. We're going to do the bottom. Make sure the drain's correct. But before we start, because this clay has sand in it, and the reason why we use clay with sand in it is so it can take thermal uh, thermal shock. You never know when somebody's going to pour boiling water in one of these sinks, and we have to have it so it doesn't crack. If you use pure porcelain, you might get a crack in it. So the sand acts as a distributor of the heat, kind of like putting a spoon in a glass before you put hot water in it. So I'm going to take a rib here, and I'm just going to smooth this out. You can hear the sound of the sand, and what I'm doing is I'm forcing the sand into the clay so that the surface of the clay doesn't have any anomalies in it and it's real smooth. It doesn't take much, but it takes a lot of pressure. That's why you want it leather hard, so you can put pressure on the clay without it uh, changing shape. Now it's pretty good. A little coffee here, I recommend Pete's from Berkeley. Only the finest potters use peats. I know Starbucks is uh, probably an acceptable alternative to some. Probably not. But. So, I have a nice smooth surface here. I forced the sand on the inside. Now I'm ready to put a slip on. Now the slip I make, you want it the consistency of maybe loose peanut butter, not too wet. And this is a hockey brush, Japanese hockey brush, a nice wide one. I have two of them here. This is a little different kind of brush. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take this slip and throw it on there. And smooth it out. Because the clay is still wet enough, this white slip will actually go into that clay surface a little bit. The reason why I do this is because I want to use a nice white glaze on this so I can draw on this pot. And uh, I want to make sure that any light that gets through that glaze hits a white surface and reflects back. It gives me kind of a gives me a, a brighter palette to paint on, a brighter canvas to paint on. So what I've done basically is used a clay with sand in it so I don't have to worry about thermal shock and then I slip it with a white slip 
And this is not a true slip. This is actually just uh, a porcelain clay. It's bee mix from uh, Laguna Clay Company. And it's been uh, screened a couple of times through a hundred mesh to make sure there's no sand or impurities in it. There's a lot of recipes for uh, true slips. This is essentially just clay. They want to get a nice coating. The brush will leave marks. You try to minimize them as much as possible, but they're so fine that it really won't make too much difference. Look at that, I got a porcelain pot now instead of a sandy pot. <clears throat> Again, this is only the second time I've used this clay. This is Hopkins White with sand from uh, Aardvark Clay Company. Always experimenting and see what clay is going to work the best. One of the problems with uh, globalization is that uh, the clay sources keep getting closed down, and you have to find a really good clay. So while that's drying, I'm going to start trimming on the outside here. I'm going to do as much as I can on this outside before I flip it over. Because remember, it's 35 pounds, and when you flip it over, you got to flip it in one flip. Okay, cut. So I'm going to just start cutting this clay away. Notice I always use uh, two hands with a trimming tool and I put one finger on the bat for balance. Something that's dried like this for five days is really pretty tough and it's easy to uh, get bounced around because the clay is really solid. It's just barely trimmable. Often I would trim it a little softer than this. Got a little bit of a wow in it, a little bit of a warp and drying. 